Hello and welcome to the Joined Up Writing Podcast, where a little procrastination goes a long way. I'm Wayne Kelly. And I'm Leah Osborne. And this is episode 21, Would You Believe It? Mm -hmm. Um, And this is following on from the previous episode, which was all about self-publishing for beginners. And today we're going to be looking at something that's really important that fits within that, which is editing. Mm -hmm. Uh, self-editing and otherwise and just some of the options that are available and why it's such an important part of the process um but before we got get to that should i say what kind of uh how's how's things going with your writing and reading and uh all things writerly pretty good actually pretty good um i I don't know if i've told you guys about this yet um i'm doing an editing diary for walking the razor's edge um i meant to tell you about this last time actually but i forgot and what i'm doing is a little video which i'm supposed to be doing every week no it was supposed to be daily and then i went ha that's not gonna happen and then it was supposed to be weekly and that didn't happen either so now it's when i remember but i just sit in front of a laptop for a couple of minutes and talk about what i've been doing and how the editing is going and what's made me tear out my hair and blah 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 blah. um and i've got a new one lined up because um oh my god i talked about this on twitter there's uh there's been a major character name change um, and there's a whole story connected to it so i need to do a video to talk about how that happened and why it's happened and how much fun it is that this has happened and why you should always talk to strangers in the street because that's, that's good I'll, about. well we'll put a link up on the show notes for that to point people towards it so they can check it out that sounds good that's oh good they're not idea, available actually. yet <laughs> but, but they're not available them. yet gonna, well, yeah. where are they gonna be you not so you've not have you done any what are you doing then you're not you're not releasing them as you go you're just gonna when are you gonna put them out i'm supposed to be releasing them as i go but i've got to edit the buggers first there's one that's edited and i just i haven't got around to putting it on my youtube channel yet and then there's two more which i still need to edit because it's full of me being stupid and running off to look after the children in the middle so i need to edit those bits out um i just i haven't got around to it i'm so busy with everything so you need to get it down so that you don't need to edit them. You're not going to have time otherwise. No, <laughs> but you know me, I ramble. <laughs> I'm really good at rambling, so I've got to sort that out. But yeah, well, the best thing to the best thing to do is like when you've done it, if you do a take and you've got rambling in it, or whatever, mm-hmm. just stop and then do another one. Having known what the bits you ramble, and you'll find that the next one's shorter. It's a bit like when you redraft. Ah, yeah, see it's what you did it there. Probably, it probably, yeah, an editing, which is what we're talking about today. And if that's not a segue, I don't know what the hell is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it actually wasn't on purpose, but, you know, I'll take it. Um, yeah, so we're talking about editing and redrafting today. Um, so, yeah, so we, we talked last time in episode 20, and if you haven't listened to that, then go back and listen to it now, along with the other ones. The archive is available online. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, go and check it out. It's all about self-publishing for beginners and talking about how you can get into it and the different options that are available. And one of the things that we touched on, but kind of we thought, you know, needs its own episode, was editing. So let's uh, talk a little bit about that. So obviously one of the options is you can write as you would normally with with your writing process you write your story or your novel or whatever it might be you've write you your ugly first draft and you go back and you start redrafting and you do your edits as you would normally mm-hmm. so that's one option that you can do but obviously there is that level of kind of pr- added pressure when you're releasing it out into the world without it going through a publisher or a, an editor or a publishing house is on, you know, past their eyes, there is that added pressure that there might be things wrong with it. Yes. So when you, that's where you might want to get some outside help. So just tell me a little bit about the kinds of editing and the kinds of second pair of eyes that are available that are out there. Because some people just think, yeah, you know, uh, a, a proof editor and they won't understand what, what other things are available. So talk me through the different kinds. Okay. Um, Well, for me, um, there are three kinds of editing and they're split into one, two, three. Um, The first is content editing. The second is line editing. And the third is proofreading. Content editing covers um, uh, plot, characterization, uh, the full arc of your story. Excuse me. Line editing covers things like continuity. Um, Does this date? 
actually mean what you think it is or is it not um your grammatical issues uh should we shift this up here so it makes a bit more sense it focuses on things like flow um and then proofreading which is right at the end is the cleanup which traditionally you'd do on a piece of paper which was the final product and you're just checking it one last time before it goes to print um but proof editing is to cover your last few typos your grammatical issues um, and again, consistency. So are you using double quotes or are you using single quotes? Are you using an oxocomma or are you not? Are you writing numbers or are you using numerals? That's the sort of thing that proofreading covers. And those are the three stages. And would you say, it's fair? is it fair to say that proofreading, mm -hmm. and I'm not putting any kind of importance on, on uh, one over the other, but from a kind of obvious type thing with self-publishing, particularly I know I found when I've downloaded like, free books or whatever uh proof editing is kind of one of the most obvious things that's often lacking like within the first one or two pages i'll see typos or a spelling mistake or mm. something really glaring you know that's before you even get a chance to get into the content yeah um yes and I think that's an issue because once you've written something yourself you're very close to the text and you can't always see um I ended up in a conversation with um, one of the guys from Breathless Press Group about this, but what happens is the human brain substitutes what it knows is supposed to be there as opposed to what is actually there. So if you're reading something that you're very familiar with, it's very easy to not see a skipped word or something that's spelt incorrectly. If you've got one of the um, uh, homonyms, is that what it's called? Um, you know, lightning versus lightning and there, there and there and... Oh, what was the one that got me? I was so cross. Um, compliment and compliment. One spelt with an I and one spelt with an E. And I couldn't believe that I had the wrong one in um, a published piece of work. And I, I nearly cried because I thought, oh, no. But lots of people might not notice that, but I did. And I went back and changed it. But proofreading will take care of those things. Um, if you've got someone with an eagle eye and it normally shouldn't be you that does it because you're too close to the text. Yeah, uh, or presumably, well, I know from my own experience, so a, a kind of one of the ways around that is to give yourself some, well, there's a couple of ways around it. Give yourself enough time between when you've actually finished writing it and when you look at it again, because that does help with that, I find. Yeah. And the other thing is, I know we've said it before, lots of times, read it out loud and literally read it word by word. If you do that, you tend to pick up most things or it will you know you will pick up a lot of things but you but you're quite right the way that the human brain is is wired and the way that you read once you learn to read you don't actually most people read based on shapes and yeah. they only really they only really look at the beginning and the end of a word mm -hmm. so as long as that's pretty much right you just skip straight over it onto the next one yeah um, and you do this you do similar thing with sentences as long as the kind of you get the beginning and the middle and the end of the sentence kind of looks right it's dead easy to miss a word out because your brain just fills the gaps. So yeah, so proof proof editor is uh, really important if you want to look professional when you self publish and you don't want to look like an idiot or just have some <laughs> glaring out or, or like you say, just something that will just niggle you every time you see it. Yeah, that's not right. But as I say, that is one of the things that in the past that has detracted me when I've downloaded a free book or something like that. Mm -hmm. like it has immediately put me off. I've thought, ugh. You know, it's just kind of, especially if I, if I see if I see one and it's just like a typo, I'm like, okay, that could be just a formatting thing. But if it's like on the first or second page, and you've seen two or two or three, it just smacks of sloppiness and the person not really caring about it. Yeah, it's it's not fun to read, is it? It's just, you can't enjoy it. No, no. So you could just get somebody else that's relatively proficient in in English and grammar. And they can have a look at it. So if you if you're not on a budget, uh, but if you have got a little bit of money within your self publishing budget, what options are open to you there? Um, what in terms of proofreading or all over? All over. Well, you can pay for um, you can pay for editing, can't you? I mean, y you have choices. Um, you can pay for the content editing or the line editing or the proofreading. Um, and personally. I choose to pay for proofreading and line editing because content editing is something that you can sort out with a good beta reader and practice. If you practice 
uh, working on structure, on characterization, on dialogue, on description, on setting. Most of the stuff that a content editor would pick up for you can be done by a beta reader who's used to reading in your genre. They'll be able to tell you this doesn't quite make sense or this doesn't follow through or I don't believe this character would do this or this middle section lags and needs looking at or this climax is not a climax and in fact I nearly went to sleep. You know, those are the things that a content editor will look at for you. And if you've had enough practice and you have a decent beta reader, you can, I don't want to say skip that step, but you can avoid paying someone for it if you don't have the money because um, line editing is tougher. Um, yeah. And that's what, you know, just spend the money on if you have the money. And if you want to know more about beta readers, we covered it in episode 15. So head mm -hmm. back to episode 15 and check that out because that's got about a lot of the pros and cons of using a beta reader and why you'd want to do that. And also, as you were talking about that, I was thinking an, another way um, to kind of get input on the content side of things would be a decent critique group, which is what our episode yeah. one was was about. And we mentioned our beloved uh, Phoenix writers. Um, but yeah, any, any of those things would be able to pick that up. So I, I agree with you. I think that's, I think that's a good idea, uh, to look at those things. And, and if you're an inexperienced writer and you're just starting out, then just getting a second pair of eyes is, is worth it. And as we've talked about it before, if you can get with a, uh, either a, a critique group or an online forum or somebody that's kind of got a little bit more experience than you or knows your genre, then that's a really, really powerful thing to do. Mm -hmm. So just um, give us a bit of a flavor if you can, if you can kind of think of some of the examples when you've done, been going through this editing process, because uh, we have kind of touched on it in recent episodes, I'm sure, just in conversation really. Mm -hmm. But some of the kind of difficulties that you've faced and some of the major edits that you've kind of had to make just in general terms, the types of <laughs> the type, the types of things that tend to come up. You've kind of mentioned some of them. So you talked about consistency and things maybe not being quite uh, right, but what are the types of things that tend to come up in the editing process? Um, plot holes. <laughs> plot holes is a big one. Um, characters that start to sound like you or like each other. That comes up a lot. Um, did I say inconsistencies? I'm starting to lose the thread here. Um, inconsistencies, did, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, does your middle section lag? Um, pacing, that's the word I'm looking for. So if your middle section lags, do you need to pace it slightly differently to flow from your beginning to your middle to your end? Um, does your character start out as a whiny weedy sort but before they go through their life-changing event that makes them start to grow you know have they punched someone in the nose or just done something that's mad out of character for them um have you put something into your story at uh, at one place in time where it doesn't actually make sense it needs to happen later these are the sorts of things that can come out um and they need to be worked through and a lot of these things can probably be solved if you plan beforehand. This is me telling myself to plan my stories now because um, it's not something I used to do and it makes my editing process go on for ages and ages. Um, also, um, quite specifically, it can pick out redundancies within your story. Um, does this scene need to be here? Does this line of text need to be here? Do they need to go to this place? Does this character even belong in the story or could they just be skipped altogether and amalgamated into another one, which is something I've already talked about, you know? Um, yeah, stuff like that. So is there something to be said for having uh, a kind of an ongoing relationship with the same editor, would you say, if you, especially if you're doing a series or something? I think so. Um, yeah. I mean, my working with um, Karen on the meeting each other series was, actually really nice because we sort of used Vicky and Lara, which was the first story to kind of get to know each other. Um, and by the time we got to, um, what's it called? I can't even remember the name of my story now. Simone and Mr. Bradford, that's the fourth one. Um, that's the fifth one, beg your pardon. By the time we got to that, we understood each other, if you like. So I understood how she edits. So I knew what to take care of before she got to the document if that makes sense and she understood how I write so she could 
infer what I meant if something wasn't clear and make a suggestion for me to fix it. Or she could say, I think you meant this, but you've actually written this. Um, and that's something that we've built from working together across the series from books one to five, um, because I didn't actually work with her for the last one. So um, if I was looking at, I, I've just getting my story ready to self publish and I want to put it out there mm -hmm. and I'm looking at editing and I have got a little bit of money and I'm looking for an editor that's out there. What, what do I need to be thinking about when I'm, what kinds of things do I need to be looking? Shall I just Google it, take the top one that I find and just send them a script and that that's fine. What, what, what sort of questions do I need to be asking? What, how do I need to, what do I need to look at to work out whether it's the right editor for me and my genre and my work? You need to know what they've edited beforehand. Um, sometimes a new editor is so nervy about what they're doing, they might over edit or under edit. So that's something to look at, although I don't think it comes up too much these days because people generally know what they're doing. Um, you need to know if they edit short stories or long stories because um, that might have a bearing on how they like pace. Um, you could look at the sorts of stories they've edited in the past because it might give you a hint on the sort of style they like. Are they a literary editor? In which case they're probably not going to be interested in your horror story um, or your fantasy thing about vampires. It shouldn't have much bearing on it, but if you need to work closely with them, it helps if they actually like the genre that you're writing in because they'll be as passionate about it as you are. You know, um, also look at how popular they are because if they're mad popular and very, very busy, they'll be spreading themselves across a number of um, a number of clients and you might not get the level of time with them that you want. Um, and look at their prices as well. You know, do they offer a sample for free um, to begin with? Um, do they quote you based on word count or by hours spent? Because actually that makes a lot of difference. And if you're a new writer and they're charged by the hour, you could be paying a bucket compared to somebody who charges by the word. Um, so that's something to consider as well. So there's lots of things there and it's the, it's the usual things really It's budget and finding the, finding mm. the right person, depending on the money that you've got and the genre that you, that you're working in. Yeah. Oh yes. Okay. <laughs> a lot of it is the same. Yeah. Yeah. To get it, to get it uh, over to the right thing. Well, we'd really like to hear from the people that uh, are actually out there in terms of maybe you're an editor that's listening to this, you know, how do you go about it? What are some of the tips that you could give to writers, new writers that are, are maybe putting their work together with a view to getting it out of their self publishing? Why do you think they should, you know, use a professional editor? What's to be gained from that? Or maybe you've just, you've, you've actually just employed the services of, a, of an editor or you've had a, but, you know, if you've had a good or bad experience, tell us and tell us why, you know, why it worked or didn't work for you. We'd really like to hear that. Uh, yeah. And you can do that by reaching us on Twitter, which is at JU Podcast, uh, Facebook, which is Joined Up Writing Podcast. And you can follow us on there. And also you can just follow us on the web, which is joinedupwriting.co.uk. I'm on Twitter, Twitter or Twitcher, which is the bird watching <laughs> equivalent of Twitter <laughs> uh, for Twitchers. Um, that, <laughs> which is <Sorry>. <laughs> which is uh, Mr. Kelly to you, uh, Leah. You're on Twitter. It's that Leanne. It's uh, Eliandra X Raven. So yeah, so get uh, let's get joined up basically. So I'm Wayne Kelly, and I'm Leah Roswell. Happy writing, and see you next time. Peace out, folks. <laughs> <laughs>